Hi, this is Michaela. Welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. Hello and welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. I'm Andrew Sabo. And we're here to talk about episode 442A. The two ro- or nope, not no the. Just two roads. There's only two of them. It's hard to say 244A, two, two roads. roads. Yeah, but like it, it, it's too many twos. Well, yeah, and it like forces you to like take a breath, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, it just doesn't flow. We need 244A, the two roads, or 244A, two, two roads. Two roads, both of them. 244A, two roads. P. Yeah. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. I really hope that was correct otherwise. Oh, no, you're, you're okay. right. Good, awesome. If so, not, tweet at us. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, so, yeah, like you said, this is A, so this is half of an episode. It, yep. So. They did that a lot. Yeah. In, like, the late 90s. Yeah. Like, it felt Why? like there was just a year or two. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's the thing that, like, every Nickelodeon TV show is. Yeah. Where it's like, well, we don't have a 22-minute episode. We've got two 11s. Yeah. That's that's enough for you guys. Uh, um adventure time did that for a really long time i yeah. mean that's that's what adventure time was so. yeah oh yeah i mean spongebob fairly is but oh is spongebob all... not uh is... 22 minutes nope oh, it's okay. two two elevens wow. they might occasionally dip into the, the 22? full 22 at territory wow but, but yeah uh, most of those cartoons that like i grew up with on nick were yeah were half episodes huh lilo and stitch even did a couple half episodes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's right. um so uh this episode aired april 15th of 2000 it was written by jim ware and directed by phil lawler jim ware he has written 12 episodes okay um all kind of around this time uh the... did he only write this half or do you write both halves i believe he just wrote this half huh okay all right. But we can find out. Yep. He just wrote this half. I am slightly surprised, though, that Odyssey would pick the 11-minute thing just because it's an audio medium. Like, it seems strange to me. Like, I get TV it is. show. Well, and they, like, obviously got away from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I believe they only did it in the period where Paul McCusker was not on the show. Oh, Huh. Like there, there was a period in which Paul McCusker left, and I want to say it was Phil Lawler who took mm-hmm. over, um, for a couple years, and then Paul McCusker comes back on with Novacom. Yeah. Um, but kind of during that section, they have a lot of different writers on. They have, um, there's not really any big arcs. Mm-mm. Kind of like from when Wit gets back to when yeah. Novacom starts. It's all pretty, like, variety show Yes. Where you have, like, all these different, you know, ongoing bits. We have school episodes. We've got, you know, Imagination Station mm-hmm. episodes. But it's all pretty. Yeah. And this episode especially, which this is uh, 34, In Your Wildest Dreams. Yeah. Which is one of the most, like, disparate of episodes or of, uh, of uh, albums. Yeah. It's got uh, the original Passages mm-hmm. episodes and i slap floor yeah and then a bunch of these like half episodes little yeah little things and yeah it's it's an interesting one yeah i i I don't i mean i guess if they didn't have paul mccusker i'm just surprised that they would try and deviate so much from the norm in that way yeah i don't know you just you kind of gotta find your new groove yeah and uh apparently the new groove is you've thrown off the emperor's groove (laughs) Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't preview this, so we're gonna see what this promo is. It might have things about both parts. We will find out shortly. On the next Adventures in Odyssey, two boys make different choices about stealing candy. A decision that takes their lives in different directions. But one day, they meet again, and you'll never guess where. Plus, Bart Rathbone is afraid his store is in for some competition. And as usual, he has a clever plan to make the competition leave town. Sticks and stones may break some bones, but who's? Find out on the next Adventures in Odyssey. I am so confused at what that music was. Me too. I, I think it was like six different things. Yeah. 
it was like elevator music, but also sad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it does have both parts, but it's interesting. So that's uh, referencing Sticks and Stones, which is uh, 442B. Mm-hmm. Um, has never been released, released on an album. It only aired once. Wow. It, I think, got flagged for, like, offensive Amish stereotypes. Now I'm trying to... What? Watch. What was the issue? No, 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 no. That's a different one. Uh, this one was dropped because uh, they had they felt it had too many insults for kids to call each other. <laughs> and so now when it airs... Oh. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> now when it airs, uh, the the lying tale goes along with it, and that's what's on the album release as well. Mm-hmm. But the original radio broadcast had Sticks and Stones. Wow. Joe was just like, we yeah. gave kids too many mean name ideas. Yeah. The, the, uh, the Amish one is BTV Grace, uh, oh. also written by Jim Ware, only aired once. Wow. Never released otherwise. Jim Ware really pushing the boundaries. <laughs> Jeez, guy. Yeah, well, and he is, in this episode, pushing the boundaries of what is considered Twilight Zone. Yeah. Because yeah. this does not fit in with the Twilight Zone tropes at, at all. all. Nope, nope. It's not trippy. It's not, um, like, Centered technology around based. It's not yeah right. It, it it once again does not have this one even more than last one does not have kids from Odyssey in it yeah at all. It's just wit telling a parable basically. It is wit telling a parable, and a bad one at that. <laughs> we'll get into it. And it's the episode starts right off yeah. with the music, mm-hmm. um, and then wit does the intro. Yeah, not Connie. Correct. Why would this be the Twilight? Ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, no, fine. No, it's, it's 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 Wit's time to shine. He doesn't get enough uh, airtime on the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, He's got to meet so, his quota. So yeah, he does. He does the the narrative intro, and then he talks um, about the gate that is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. Yep. And then he jumps right into the story about Simon and Sonny or Sonny. I don't know. Sunny. 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 How do you have that spelled in your notes? Uh, only because of the... OA uh, Club, you have it as S-O-N-N-I? Yep. Okay, me too. <laughs> that does not seem right. <laughs> because I guess if it was S-U-N-N-Y, that would be a girl's name? Yeah, I guess. The what sunny- is Sunny short for? Sonathan? <laughs> Sonathan. You're right. That's got to be what it is. Um, so basically, the the story starts. So um, Wit's narrating the story about Simon and Sonny, who are two friends, and they're in high school, and um, they're throwing a football in the hallway, and Sonny wants I to go. I think it's the cafeteria. Oh, is it the cafeteria? Okay. I, I thought it was. Maybe. No, oh, I. Maybe it isn't. It's, it's a vending machine, yes. which is the problem. They throw the football. Uh, well, Simon doesn't the, want to, to. To start off, yeah. Simon doesn't even want to throw the football. Yeah. And then Sonny's like, nah, do it. And Simon's like, mm, I don't want to. And Simon's like, or Sonny's like, nah, 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 do it. I'll go deep. And then Simon does it. And then Sonny, what, do he, does he drop the ball? or the No, ball? I think he throws it. It misses Simon and mm. crashes through a vending machine. Yes. And then they steal all the candy. Uh, Simon does not steal candy. No. Sonny. Sonny steals the candy. Sonny Belio. Wow. That's yeah. a bad guy name. Well, yeah. it. He goes on to be in the mob, and that's a uh, very Italian name. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> We're just going to gloss over that yeah so so simon is uh is voiced by cory burton okay um which becomes apparent when he grows up yes <laughs> and uh sunny is voiced by nathan carlson mm-hmm. who uh people know as uh, richard maxwell um so yeah interesting yeah so they steal so the, the candy the, yeah the the, the premise it, no sunny steals the candy yeah that's and, what i said you said they oh uh, no Sonny. Sonny. Sonny steals the candy. Simon important. doesn't. It's very important that you know, Chalk Squad, Simon does not steal the candy. <laughs> Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Simon didn't take the candy. <laughs> right. 
because that is the premise of this thing is like hey uh somehow this leads sunny on a crime spree that ends with him dying in jail yep pretty much no so literally he steals candy yep then steals cars uh yeah, well, no, no, he steals candy, then he stops going to church. Yes, 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 yes. Because it starts out with the fact that they both grew up in the same part of town. Yeah. And we're both, you know, uh, went to the same church mm-hmm. and and everything. So yes. Sonny, Sonny steals this candy here, stops going to church, begins mm-hmm. stealing regularly, including something called mini monster cards. Yeah. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Pokemon? Oh, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's what that is. Thank you. Perhaps Digimon. <laughs> I was looking at that like <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! mini monster cards, but yeah, you know, you're you're absolutely, absolutely. right. It Focus on the family hates Pokemon. And this episode came out in like ninety nine, no two thousand. We which was about peak it. Pokemon. Yeah, that is the the late nineties, early two thousands is the Pokemon era. Uh, so yeah. He then, we, we jump to him in high school, mm-hmm. where he steals a custom Trans Am mm-hmm. with a CD player, fuzzy dice, and bongos. Bongos! <laughs> of course. He's like, ah, oh, this thing has everything I want. A CD player, fuzzy dice, bongos, and bongos. I'm like, bongos. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> That's what was missing from I'm, my last car. <laughs> I'm rewinding this. Did he say bongos? Bongos. <laughs> I like to imagine they're like in the passenger seat yeah. like where the With glove the... box would be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so you can just For add sure. a little bit of uh, a little bit of sound as you're well it, what what was last the episode the man who watched tv at a at a red light yeah you can play the, bongos at a red play light bongos at a red light that's safer much safer <laughs> We still do not endorse it. Nope. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he gets caught for stealing the car and sent to Juvie. Yep. Where he meets a very old man who's yes. a criminal. Yes, he does. I was very confused as to what this was. It's like a correctional facility with also just actual criminals. Right. Yeah. The Juvenile Delinquent Center, but also... Jail. <laughs> right. They do, we just mix them together with the... Uh, with the hardened criminals. <laughs> it's only 11 minutes long. Don't look at it too closely. I'm that that's that's our show, Andrew. I know. Um so so yeah. So he then go the he and this guy go and rob a gas station? Yeah. Presumably at gunpoint. Yeah. Well, assumedly. Mm-hmm. Like this episode really skirts around with just like I mean really good sound engineering, so you yeah. know exactly what's happening, but nothing's actually said. Yeah. Similarly with like the car crash later on, like they don't even say what happened. You yeah. just hear a car crash. Yeah. Um, Connie is the is the cashier here mm-hmm. at the uh, at the thing. That was fun. Um. So yeah, he goes back to jail for armed robbery. Mm-hmm. No, no, he doesn't. No, no, he he gets away, and then he becomes a big time mob boss and has a right. casino. Yeah, and he he's starts a talking mob like, mm, king is he? And, yes, and becomes uh, very uh, house Italian. Of, house always um, wins, see. And then, and then he goes to jail. <laughs> he is convicted for fifty nine years in prison, yep. and dies in prison, and then goes to hell. <laughs> and we hear Satan, voiced by Will Ryan. Yes. That's confusing considering the Mortal Coil episode. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Odyssey? It is, uh, yeah, fun. He's like you, the, the crackle of yeah, hell, yes. Too. And he's like, mm, got a spot for you here. And he's like, ah, oh, crap. And then he goes to, and then he's just in hell. And then we cut back to Simon. Yep, good guy, Simon. Simon has never missed church. Nope. He memorized won. a bunch of Bible verses. And he won every Bible bowl. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Bible quizzing. And then he went to Bible college, and he was president of his youth group. Yeah. Do um, youth groups have presidents? They shouldn't. Yeah. I'm putting my foot down. And saying... As the person who probably would have been youth group president? <laughs> yes. No. No. Bad. I, that would have ruined me. Yeah. I would have ended up like this guy. Yeah, you definitely for sure would have ended up like yeah, Simon. No, no, no youth group should have a president. Nope. Not, it, that, that's horrible. It's a terrible thing. Why? Who what thought is that the was value? a good idea? What is the value of that? Let's Please. be real, though. The presidents of youth group are who the youth pastor pulls aside and is like, hey, 
Uh, if you want to come here on Saturday nights, we can have like a special like leadership program for you guys. Right. Those are the presidents. Those are the presidents. But uh, if your youth group had a literal elected or appointed president, yes. Uh, write to us, please. Please. I, I need, need to, to know if this is a this. thing. If you are the president. How did that go? <laughs> yeah, like, are, are, was it fun? Do you have good memories? Are Are you in counseling now? Like, yeah. How, how Maybe did... you should be. Maybe you shouldn't be. I'm not here to judge. Um. Yeah. We We go on to say <laughs> that he's he's always been honest. Yeah. Um. Uh. Deirdre pulls him aside and like is offering him like the test answers or something. Yeah. And he's like, No, that's horrible. Yeah. Um. Deirdre is voiced by Pamela Hayden. Of Katrina fame. Yep. The OG Katrina God, before she got recast. Oh, that's right. I forgot she got recast. It's it's one of the smoother voice transitions on Odyssey. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it helps that her and Eugene were out of town for like four years. Yeah. Where were they? What? We covered that. <laughs> I know. That was literally... <laughs> <laughs> we covered how little sense the timeline makes. Yes, post Novacom. Anyways, go back uh, go, and listen to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. If you if you got on recently, uh, all the episodes are up, and we're not we're not pulling an earwolf and sticking them behind a pear wall. So no, sir. Go back and listen. Yeah. For um, all. So yeah. So yeah. Oh, he uh, coming out of Bible college, he launches a motivational speaking career, mm-hmm. which. You could just hear oh, yeah. Wit's disdain for that oh, yeah. as he was saying it. Oh my gosh, he became a motivational speaker. And then it cuts to him saying, Don't let the vending machines of your life get you down. That's Which, that's what? Right. The vending machine wasn't a problem. <laughs> it wasn't like the vending machine was trying to give him test answers. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> the vending machine was just minding his own business. Hey. That would be a proper Twilight Zone episode <laughs> if the vending machine was trying to give him test answers. That would make sense. This mm. is not really a Twilight Zone episode. It's a bad parable. It's a very bad parable. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and then he becomes mad rich, and then he has a financial, like, he has, like, a gala. Yeah, he found founds this charity, and it's, during that gala speech, is like, you know, it feels good to do good. Yeah. Um, and, and he, this is at the point in which he yeah. sounds exactly like Brian Dern. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> like Brian. Dern. Like if Brian Dern just like toned it down mm-hmm. and didn't, yeah, like, not do on his, his radio voice, did, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you guys can hear those, there are tons of geese in the background, like an army of geese. <laughs> yeah. If uh, not, I will cut this. It's um, a good idea. <laughs> anyways, we can so, just leave it in. <laughs> But I'll cut the part saying if if I yeah 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 I'll cut this yeah, um, jeez, uh so so yeah it's at this point that he decides to run, run for, for president. Well, he gets he gets elected to Congress, then he runs. Oh, for Oh, you're right. Because you're right. evangelicals think that that's a good yep. thing. Uh huh. And yet they voted for Trump. Uh huh. We should probably cut that. Ah, uh, maybe not. I'm okay with Come it. Come at I, me, Chuck well, Squad. So so yeah he. He uh, he's then at a um, at either a press conference, yeah. and somebody or... asks him about his faith, basically, yep. and he's like, "Oh well, I have room for Jesus in my heart, or something like that." Yeah, he he says something about he also says something about what is it that like Jesus was obviously an important historical figure. Like I mm-hmm. think there's room for him in the conversation or something. Yeah, um, and. Uh, that right there, that statement, damns him to hell. Yes. And then he gets in a car crash and dies, and we never get to see what his presidency would look like. Yep. Cut to hell. Yeah. He gets to hell, and and you spend the whole episode thinking, like, oh, this guy's going to go to the good place. And then he ends up going to hell, and he's like, wait a minute, I'm so confused. I did all these good things. Uh, Satan's given him the grand tour. Yeah. They have cubicles. In yep. hell? Yep, they got cubicles. Which is a funny joke. And his, like, cellmate is... His cubicle is, mate. His cubicle mate, I'm sorry. Is, uh... Is Sonny. Is Sonny. My boss he Sonny. is... He is torn up as if he hadn't already realized he was in hell until he yeah. saw Sonny. Yeah. Like, there is fire crackling. Yeah. You're being given a tour by Satan himself. Yeah. And you're like, 
Oh. You. <laughs> what? <sighs> no. <laughs> Expositional. Expositional yep. gasp. And then, and then we go to Wit saying, obviously, Sonny made all the wrong choices. Um, and you guys were probably thinking that Simon made good choices. But at the end of the day, they're in the same place. I'm Wit. Goodbye. This is why people have trust issues with God. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, to, Simon could never be good enough. There's two different roads to the same destination. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this theology with everything that I have. <sighs> Loving Jesus isn't just about going to heaven. Yeah. Let's be very clear about this. Also, if you accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you subscribe to mostly conservative theology, which Odyssey does... They probably believe in the undeniable grace part of Calvinism. <laughs> and no, that means fair. once you say you're a Christian, you're still, you're like, you can't not be a Christian. Yeah. But this guy clearly had a works-based theology mm -hmm. and it failed him. And mm -hmm. he, he didn't have the moral gumption. Even though he accepted the to... Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into his heart. <laughs> we don't actually know that. Well, that's fair. Okay. We, we don't just know, know that, that he, he did all the right things. Yes. In all the right places. So, yeah, he's going down. Yeah. I am upset. <laughs> I didn't like this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's just. What is it? It's not good. <laughs> no, and it also, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe as a kid, you'd have a different view. But. I immediately got that they were going to the state, that they were both going to end up in hell. Yeah. Like, as soon as they're talking about the second half and it's a list of works, it's like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the moral is, you both go to hell because you need to be, like, proper Christians and not just, you know, pretending to be one. Which is, okay, yeah, but, like... For all the people that were, like, children and weren't sure if they were saved right. or not, and so they prayed the prayer That's... every night because they were terrified of going to hell, like, this is the audience, like, this is the this is the result of this kind of message. Right. That's, that's exactly it. We're like, the theology of this might be perfectly sound. Yeah. I'm not going to land one way or the other on that. Yeah. But the messaging is bad yeah because this is a program that children are going to consume and not children who are throwing their lives away stealing trans ams with bongos yeah like the people listening to this are the church kid yeah. who did well in the bible bowl and yeah. they're going like oh, oh no, no what i'm doing isn't enough and that's terrifying. Yeah, exactly. That's so, a problem. <laughs> like, so it's like, yeah. That is genuinely very problematic to me. It's, yeah, it's all too, I mean, it's, yeah, it's your classic, you know, hellfire and brimstone kind of thing. Yeah, or like and, scare the hell out of them, basically. Right. But even then, it's not even like they're showing an alternative. It's not like there is a good person that we follow the example mm -hmm. of. You know, we just... We're, right. we're just left the, with... The story is, good here's people. a guy who looked like he did good, here's a guy who looked like he did wrong, and you know what? Neither of them are saved. And the and it's not like... So, like, the moral is, hey, you can't save yourself, I'm Chris doing this wrap-up, like, yeah. ask God, like, ask Jesus into your hearts and you're good. Yeah. It's just kind of like, hey, be aware that, like, doing your best isn't good enough. Bye. <laughs> right. It, yeah, I don't even know. It's a tough episode. And also, I cannot stress this enough, it is not a Twilight Zone episode. No, not even a little bit. There's, like, like it's it's as if they took the previous episode yeah. and were like, well, the Twilight Zone portion of this was the fact that we followed two characters' stories throughout their lives and then met up with them at the end. And yep. it's like, no, that wasn't the part that was Twilight Zone. No, 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 no. No, no, 
Not even a little bit. We had drug chickens, and now we have whatever the heck this 11 minutes is. (laughs) No, 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 Andrew. Whatever the hell. Whatever the hell. (laughs) Oh, my Uh, lord. Yeah. And then, yeah, and Wick goes out, and he's like, he made the right choice for this life, but not for the next. And I'm like, oh, oh. So, like, when you tell kids to read their Bible and stuff, like, all that, those were bad choices right the the only i'm the it's that (laughs) it's that thing of the only reason to do good is to gain eternal salvation yeah pretty much which is it's weird because the episode is simultaneously trying to say like hey your works aren't good enough Mm -hmm. but because it doesn't provide a solution yeah it it feels more like Oh, the reason this guy didn't make it is because, like, in the third act, he faltered. Yeah. And, you know, denied Christ in front of the thing. But which... did he really? He was just saying, like, I, like, I appreciate it. Like, he didn't deny right. it. He didn't say, like, oh, right. that's not but, something I believe anymore. I think, I think the messaging of this episode is very much, this guy did the right things, was a good person, but near the end, lost sight of why he was doing them. Mm -hmm. And then he, like, and now he's in hell. But the problem of it is that we don't see... Yeah, I guess it is just that we don't see an alternative. It's Mm -hmm. that that he is... It's just left with, this wasn't good enough. Right, and so the way, regardless of what their intention, the easiest way to look at this episode is here is a guy who was on the track to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. And a couple weeks before he died... Which, he was on the track to go to heaven based on his works, right. which are the same thing that... Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Oh my God. right, right, So, like, so, re- yeah, regardless of their intention, it reads as a dude did a lot of good, so he was going to heaven, and then right before he died, he said something he shouldn't have, so now he's in hell. Yep. And I don't truly believe that's what they're trying to portray here. No. But that's the way it reads, and it's really tough. Yeah. Because, like, I'm able to see past that and yeah. get a glimpse at what they're trying to do, which is, I assume the intention of it is... To emphasis the... on a relationship with God right. rather than the works, which is true, but there's yes. no... But they never show the relationship. It's almost aspect. like it should have been a full 20-minute episode. <laughs> like, it, it's the problem <sighs> of... Right, of... Correct. Like, we are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. Yeah. But this episode, all it's saying is his works weren't good enough to save him. Yes. And that's not good. <laughs> this is That's a, half a Bible verse. <laughs> right. This is a problem. And... Yeah, this episode made me upset. I'm glad that it was short. <laughs> yeah. And our episode was not because we're, you know, I mean, it, it, this episode will be on the shorter end of our episodes, but yeah. still, we were uh, worked up enough that it. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. So, uh, I don't have any more final thoughts. <laughs> I, no, th- those are my final thoughts. I'm going to go beat my head into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to plug? Other than walls? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm in the same boat, so... Come back next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so next week, um, we'll, we will be here, and we're going to talk about episode 537, My Girl Hallie, which I have not re-listened to, but I remember being terrifying. Bye, guys. Bye. Black Band Chat Pod is a presentation of the Lytics Podcast Co-op. This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at Wadfam Chalkpod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchalkpod at gmail.com. Episode 56, Two Roads, was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Acevo and edited by Dylan Weaver. I'm Michaela Moeller, hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wadfam Chalkpod.